Hello and welcome to another episode of Hard Play. This is episode 18 of The Witcher 2. As always, I'm your player one, Michael, and joining me as always as the spectator is David. Hello, spectating as always. Spectating this fight in Loch Moyne sewers that we don't remember. Oh no. I'm sure everybody else watching does. <laughs> That's right, I, I really should remember these things better, being always the watcher, never the fighter. You know, like, just to yeah. keep notes, maybe. Yeah, you should just have like a notebook. Yeah, I should. It's handy. Never, never bothered. Oh, fuck. Oh. That was annoying. I was like, I ran up to him and I'm like, I'm going to slash you. Didn't slash. Did, didn't get that as an option. Didn't happen. So it's been forever. Too long. Again. 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 Wait, I, like, there's another like four Doctor Who episodes that we didn't talk about. You mean just like the rest of the season? The rest of the season, because it's over already. I can't even remember what we spoke about last. No, me neither. I mean, that's how long ago I was though. We can't even remember the details. Do you want to just skip ahead and talk about the final two? We um, didn't talk about those. No, we didn't. I was just going to say, I liked the two-dimensional one because it had, like, an awesome mix of the sillier, stupider episodes that are fun, mixed with, like, the menacing, like, are oh, these things are going to kill us threat. Yes. Um, they the were a threatening thing, as well as being, like, childishly intriguing, this idea of, like, a two-dimensional... Yeah, and then, like, the Doctor being stuck in, like, a little tiny TARDIS was, like, really cute, and the, the visual effects were really fun for that. And the visual effects of the two-dimensional guys were really cool when they... Some of the effects of him being stuck in the tiny TARDIS were really dodgy, though. It was, like, yeah. clearly a flat plane. Oh, yes. Stuck yeah. on the flat thing. It yes, just, it like... was quite obviously a flat plane, which was just, um, yeah, just, like, a little green screen behind the doors yeah. of the toy TARDIS. But I loved when he, like, pulled the hand out. Yeah, see, that... Pulled off the train track. That stuff was awesome. That was great. Only thing that really annoyed me in that episode, I don't know if you remember it, was like how he fell on the train tracks. It was the most random thing ever where like they're running away from it, from them. And there was that cunt of the guy that was like the community service yep. manager. And he just turns around out of nowhere and he's like, I'm going to shove my hand in your handbag and try and grab at it. And that's when like the, the TARDIS falls out of is her that handbag. What, is that what happens? Yeah, it was really random and just like, no, nah, this doesn't make any sense. And then they never like held that against him. No. Oh, the, well, <laughs> only a little bit. The Doctor kind of, like, said that he deserved to die yeah. at the end of the episode. He's like, that bloke should have died. <laughs> I'm all for getting people to live, but nah. So, um, apparently we're not going to be in the sewer because it's just a dead end. It's locked. I don't have a key. Huh. I don't know, maybe this area will, like, ring a bell a bit better. We'll remember where we were. But yeah, so then moving so on. Ruins. Is that a dog? Yep. Hey there. Hey. Hey boy. Another dog. It's a city of dogs. No, people. We've got people. People are around. Um, I feel like you were following someone. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. It says I was supposed to be following Vernon Roach. Feel, uh, it feels like I like went off on a... Yeah, you just decided to go downstairs for no real reason. I guess. Well done. Well done for that. That's right. Ready for your chat with Radovid. Yeah, whoever that guy is. Let's, let's do it. Down for a chat with that guy. So what'd you think of the finale? The sort of the two episodes? Oh, oh wow. So many things. So many things. First of all, I feel it's important to cover the ground no, that I, I had to watch the second last episode with, a, with, with the, the big spoiler at the end. Being spoiled. Being spoiled. Yeah. I, I had to do that and... Besides this uh, it's alright for us to soldiers. spoil everything now. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I knew that Missy was the master for the whole episode, and it happens at the very end. It was very, very frustrating. It happens in like the last five seconds of the episode. Yeah, but other than that, it is an amazing 
amazing, amazing episode. That was a really good episode. I really enjoyed that. Such good, just such good acting. And, and it was a really cool mystery that it was like whatever the, the, the corporation was called and they had that little Cyberman eye symbol. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I'm missing something. Yeah. Like, oh. And then the, the double door closes. Yeah. Like what was it? A little it? audio cue plays. 3W or W3? Something like that. Yeah. And then all the, you know, they're all sitting there with their transparent skeletons. Well, the skeletons aren't transparent, but, you know. Yeah. And you're like, oh, wait, they're skeletons. And then it's like, oh, yeah, but the liquid doesn't show any, it only shows organic matter. And then you're like, oh, shit, they're Cybermen. And the actress who played Missy just did such a good job. Yep. It was like good John Sim master <laughs> as a woman. Even doing the accent just to like piss off the doctor. Yep. It's the whole thing. And then, I don't know, I feel like she kind of Garrett was let down by the writing in the actual yeah, finale. Majesty. Yep, I agree. As usual, you turn she just suddenly lost any character expected. consistency. Yeah, that, I mean, so it's that character consistency in the writing that I think... Capaldi suffered from as well in episodes. Yeah, I feel like next season Capaldi himself is going to be so much better because I have no idea what order they shot this season in. Yeah. And that might be why, like, it seems like some episodes he's got a real handle on who he is and in other episodes you're like, oh, he doesn't? Is yeah. that the writing or is that him? And it's like, well, maybe now that he's done, he's definitely now done all of them. There's no time travel involved in TV production. Um Next season, he'll from be next like, season, he will, like there should be. Yeah, even if the writing's not consistent, he he can make himself consistent. Hopefully, there's certain things when it's the writing where it's like, oh, really, you're gonna make him say this line and make him do this thing in the scene, but it can't really alter. Well, you might not be able to change the thing, but like you know, some of those really impressive actors, they'll be like, oh, well, the I'm gonna change the line just this little bit, and then that suits me that much more. And it then makes me doing this make sense because it's in the line then why the normal me would do this. Mm. I'm trying to think of an example while I'm talking and I can't think of one, but like there are things where that's yeah. happened. And that's good acting. Assassin. Pure coincidence. I just happened to be there. Things like that oft seem to happen to you. Do you know how he died? I wasn't there. I wasn't there. The first lie of the day, and the negotiations have yet to begin. Sorry. How can I help you if you're not honest with me? It's a good question, David. It's a good question. Did we kill him? Yeah. No. Hensold had Roach's unit murdered. I can't call it anything else. You kind of just like walked away and let Roach like yeah. kill him. In the chaos that followed the Battle of Vergen, we caught up to him in one of the houses. I killed him because it had to be done. It was just. A death mold is next on the list. That is the only reason I won't have you hanged, Vernon Roach. <laughs> you said you needed help, Witcher. Tell me more. Oh, so many options. We can just go with, like, the yellow one. Yeah. <laughs> Sheila de Tanzerville is behind the murderers that hit Tamaria, Edern, and Kedwin. How do you know? Because I know. We killed one of them in Edern. Deathmold used his magic to give me a glimpse of the past. I saw the assassin talking to others. Yeah, I remember they doing that. Yeah. It's, all it's all coming back to me. One mage's magic shows another's guilt. Yeah, I didn't no didn't particularly magic, like the finale. I was sort of watching it, like going along with it, being like, oh yeah, oh yeah. And then, but just by the end, I was like, no. And then they're like, rain. It's full of cyber spores. It can make these corpses that are rotten in the ground into metal cybermen. That wasn't like my biggest problem with the episode. I would like let that fly. <sighs> maybe maybe it's like it's it becomes a big problem because the rest of the episode's got issues. Yeah. Whereas like if the rest of the episode was good, you'd be like, no, no, I can like forgive that. Whatever. Whatever. Like it had to happen. Um. Well, the talks beckon. I found in the, where you said the kill the moon episode had that very like anti-abortion. Yeah. At the end, it really felt like it had that really forced like anti-suicide thing. Where he didn't want um, the inhibitors to be turned on. Yeah, for, um, that's right. For Danny Pink. 
because it would kill him technically he's yeah. like, i'm already dead he's like no you have your consciousness you're alive you, you're a person don't, don't kill yourself and suicide then, is wrong and then I'm it's the just like listen to me <laughs> and it's just like oh moffat love love isn't an emotion damn it yeah it's deeper than that in death mold's hands and and yeah just, on the good wendy's Felt like Letty Downey. Yeah. War. Just a bit. This is a really long conversation that they're having. It is. You paying attention at all? No. That's all right. <laughs> I feel bad. I feel bad because I don't think I've I had this conversation the first time around. Or I don't remember it definitely. So. Well, you, you said this is the first time you've played. Yeah, going this path. So, you know, we've come to him because we're like, we're after Death Mold. And that definitely wasn't the case before. So were you on Death Mold's side before? Entirely dependent on him. No, he just... Which will strengthen his position in the Conclave. Yeah, it was... Well, it was sort of like we were on Death Mold's side this time, and then he turned against us. Yeah, true. Last time, it's just kind of like, oh, he's just kind of not a character that you deal with. The nobles of Vizima would greet her on bended knee, and the North would emerge stronger than ever. I must attend these talks, Geralt. Time is short. Bring me the girl, the two of you. Men without country. So when you are like Renegade paying attention, do the subtitles like I help? Turn, are you able to like talk, but then just like read the subtitles and like? Yeah, I can kind of do both. Kind of do both. Yeah. So I was thinking about that. I'd stop talking then. I admit, but I normally, if I want to pay attention to both, I kind of can. No, I wasn't calling you out. I was just wondering because I was. I was um, thinking about how we turned them on in the first episode because it's like, well, we, we'll put these there so people yeah. can see what's going on even if we're not... Um, do I have to... Um, oh, no, I can do it through here. What shall I get? Um, sometimes I, thought, I find this background more disturbing than others. Like sometimes it's really gross and then sometimes yeah. you're like, like, oh, yeah. this is cool. Whatever, it's just the background. Uh, Invest your two talents. Oh, two talents. Fuck it. Let's just get both of these. Just fully upgrade the combat tree. Nice. Nice. You reckon you're going to be able to fully upgrade all the trees? No, but I think we'll be close to getting two trees fully upgraded, which is a thing because back before they changed it, it was more like you could fully upgrade one. Yeah. Because each point had like two levels to it. Yep. Where now like they've, it's just like the one level get both things definitely a good balance oh stuck on the door oh damn roach fucking slam in the door in your face it's just like boom yep interstellar bam also slammed in the face oh i was just gonna say um oh doctor who no uh no yeah subtitles like subtitles sorry because i was just like figuring that you'd be able to like talk or like listen to someone talking and also read dialogue because with me I'm like can't do that at all it's interesting it really depends on what it is but I suppose yeah dyslexia that kind of dyslexia a lot of that I think Roach. I can Better like she she looks important I that wasn't like... sus at all I can't like listen to a podcast and and read something completely on. unrelated at the same time. Yeah. But like if I hear something in the podcast and I'm like, oh, I don't know what that is. I want to look it up. I can keep listening oh, yeah. and look that thing up and like go through all the looking stuff up steps. Vipers. Another mess. This is no time for pleasantries, Geralt. Calm yourself, Brigida. You were to watch Voltes' children. I saw nothing. Like a hair. Yeah, it's really nice. Obviously I was wrong, but I need your help. Anais has been kidnapped. Busi is likely dead. Really good details on the like shoulder as well. Yeah. You knew a bit of lace. what you were getting me into. You know that entire rotting place. Considering it's what, like two, two years old, 2012? Well, half as well as you do, no, it's 2011 you game. Oh, wow, it's just got all these little details. Yep. I have been hiding in this city for three days, scurrying about like a rat. They're hunting me. I'll not let you leave me here. What do you propose? Escort me out of the city. Yeah, never, never seen her before. It's this new, new person. No idea who she is. Take me there, and I will tell you all. It's a long way. You've a traitor in your camp, Roach. Perhaps more than one. Oh, I, shit. I don't know if the hand movements were necessary then. Though. They're a bit of um. 
yeah, the, the movements that they make with their bodies are a bit like generic and the sort of like just on a looping yeah. pattern thing. It's like here, be be excited. Yeah. Shake my I shake my hands at you. Take her to the river. Which is alright. Like it it's not quite as bad as um the uh like Ocarina of Time is like one of the first ones to do that. And they just do like the same animation over and over again forever. Yeah. But a traitor in the Temerian camp threatens us all. Escort Brigida, learn what you can. I'd thank you, Roach, if you weren't such a shit. Ha. I'm counting on you, Gil. <laughs> Brigida must get to her destination safely. Good luck, Roach. Yeah, I feel like when I'm listening to a podcast sometimes, I can be like, oh, I'm going to like read this like my on my RSS reader. And then I'll just be like, oh, wait, I totally zoned out. Yeah, no, nah, can't do both. Can't do both. Then we'll descend the mountain path and go onto the river. You know what we'll find. Does it Oops. matter, Richard? Blessed be the so interstellar. It's interstellar. Sorry, I, I was I was trying to remember something and I can't. It's really frustrating me. Uh, interstellar, fantastic, fantastic. Getting a lot of shit. Even more shit than when I when I talked to you last about how people make stupid, like, flaws about the movie. They're like, oh, this is a flaw, and I'm like, no, they totally explained it in the movie. You just weren't listening. Yeah. What's the latest? What's the latest on people bad mouthing? Oh, like, people have said about how the score's bad. Uh, the not the score. The the mix is bad, where it's like hard to hear some of the dialogue. Yeah. I, a lot of people have been like, maybe that's deliberate, you know, because it's like, oh, you don't really need to hear the dialogue. Well, that's what Nolan kind of went out and said that he's like, it is like a bit of a. Said that it was like an unconventional sc- mix, yeah, and stuff. But he did like intend it to be like that. It's not like an accident. Oh, so it is genuinely supposed to more or less drown out what's going on. Apparently, interesting. Um, which I'm like, yeah, can be a little bit difficult to hear some of the stuff. I didn't have problem catching the dialogue though, where some people obviously did because then they're like, oh, he's, his helmet got cracked, and then it's like, no, it's okay. I can just breathe this atmosphere. It's like, and it's no, like, that's not what was happening. But they said that you could, like, you know, breathe it f- for, like, a while. It's not far now. And even then, there was Let still oxygen in his suit. And he was he was screaming yes. the whole time. So it obviously yes. wasn't pleasant, whatever was going on. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and another person, because um, I heard one person just say, like, oh, the logic is really stupid, that they said, like, oh, let's just, um, oh, this guy's just shown up to NASA, and he was, like, this really good pilot, let's take him with us. And some person's like, that's ridiculous and stupid. Like, why would they do that? And stuff. And it's kind of like, well, multiple reasons. For one, this is like... It's a movie. <laughs> it's like, for one, there'd be no plot. And plot yes. is, a, is a big point of movies. But, like, I don't know what you would have wanted to be different. You wouldn't have had a cool intro story to him if he'd already been there the whole time. Yeah. You wouldn't have been able to introduce the world in such a good way. Yeah. There's like, besides even discussing the, minu- the minutia of, like how you write and plot and story arc a film. It's just like, they might not have known anything about him because there's like no properly organized systems. It's like, yeah, there's schooling and yeah, there's obviously some sort of food system going on. And there's, there's like, like a phone. And there's a bit of a government because they're like saying that NASA's getting like funding from them. Yeah. Um, like there was another guy that I re- heard in a review who said like, oh, it's really stupid how they said like, oh, the plan A was just there to like give people hope and stuff and he's like that's stupid who were they given hope it was like a secret organization yeah. and I was like for the people building the thing it's like they weren't going to get money it wasn't from the government they're not going to have yeah. people willing to work on it if it's like yeah this isn't for yeah. us it's not, this isn't it's for not America it's not giving the public hope it's about giving like the, the people that are paying and the people that are working there enough hope to still give the money and do yeah. the work. Because if it was just to give the public hope, he wouldn't have needed to spend all those years pretending to be working on the formula. Yeah. Um, and so then another person was just like, oh, this is the most convenient movie I've ever seen. It's just like ridiculously convenient that like he shows up there and they're like, hey, why don't you like... Yeah come here and then it's like oh the message is in the bookcase and stuff and I'm like that's not convenience that's the whole point of it's travelling back through time to like lead you there in the first place to solve the problem yeah like it's- while creating a paradox but that's not a problem like paradoxes happen in time travel all the time paradoxes aren't aren't such a ridiculously big deal because depending on how you think about it you're like well there was a there was a version of events where there wasn't the paradox maybe yes. possibly 
And it's just, well, the only version of events we are left with is the one which contains something which looks like a paradox, but it yes. isn't. Because it wasn't always that way. Yeah, which, like, in Intercell's case, it is a bit more difficult because it's like, oh, we found this wormhole that appeared there so we can jump through it. And it's like, well, according to the story, yeah. they're, they're the humans from the future who are able to manipulate gravity through time and they've placed that wormhole there so that they can escape Earth yeah. and get to another planet. And it's like, well, how do they get to another planet in order to send the wormhole to their past selves. But it's like, well, there's no guarantee that everyone on Earth was going to suddenly die. That's, those are disturbing looking. Um, everyone was going to suddenly die. Like, they were going to be dying off over time. Maybe they yeah. survived underground. And they did eventually work oh, out the maths me. to be able to do that stuff with gravity. And then they're like, oh, well, like, we're all dead and, like, infertile. Let's change history by yeah. doing by doing this stuff because we've now got that ability like Terminator style yeah where it's like it, Judgment Day happened and now we're going to go back and we're going to stop Judgment Day from happening because it's like here's this portal yeah there's so many options like that and it's like that's kind of the yeah. point of the film but is- I just hate it when someone's like that's the most convenient thing I've ever seen it's like yeah it is convenient they fucking travel back through time so that they could do all of these things yeah. that's the whole point every single thing has deliberately been like calculated I don't know why people feel qualified. They're like, oh, it's a Nolan film, so, like, everything should make sense. It's like, you don't put anything up. Like, you can watch The Expendables 3 and be like, no, it was a good action film. Like, you know, it wasn't a... It was better than the other Expendables. It's like, yeah, it's full of problems. So is every film. Yeah. That's the whole point. You don't expect them to be better. And suddenly you're like, oh, no, because this includes time travel and science fiction and And trying to be accurate, we're going to just make it need to be. Yeah. Um, Nolan has said though that he like he know he's like he, he you know, realizes that people hold his movies to a, like a higher standard than other stuff, and he doesn't mind that. He's just like just know your shit before you like make accusations. Actually, about watch it. the film, preferably more than once, more than before once, you're going to yeah. start complaining to me. If you've watched it just to pick holes in it, then that's stupid. Um, and some people were like, those robots were really stupid. They were like clunky and they looked clumsy and it didn't look like they could like fit places and do things. And it's like, no, those are like, like sort of like industrial designs of robots today. Yeah. That are like the most feasible kind of robot. They were amazing oh, robots. Like they were just a cool design. Cause yeah, it was like, I don't, I've watched some like documentaries on robots and it's like, instead of trying to be like, let's make a humanoid thing with legs and make this ridiculously complicated system of, um, where it can tell like its balance and its weight. Yeah and the terrain and stuff like that with like gyroscopes and GPS and cameras so that it can like take a few footsteps without falling over. They're just like, let's just give it these insect legs that just continuously like walk and it'll just get over any terrain. And that's the same principle behind it's like modular different. Yeah. It's like, oh, it can walk or it can roll. It can do all these different things. It's fantastic. Really? There's such a cool idea and they're, they're good robots too. Yeah. I liked them. I liked, like, the personality of them was, like, yeah. it's totally virtual and they're, like, moving around all these different tracks yeah. on, like, a slider. Um, th- that by itself was a was just a cool concept. And it's just like, oh, let's just, let's just dial that down. Oh, what the hell, man? Yeah, I hate it when people are like... Oh, I can't imagine... I, like, yeah, one guy was just like, I can't imagine a world where the Earth is so fucked that... It's a better bet to try and go into space to find a different planet than to just fix Earth. And it's like, how can you not imagine that? This film gives you that scenario. Well, admitted, admittedly, I, I kind of look at the film. I looked at it that way even while watching it. I'm like, there are so many other ways to have made food. If a lot of people have died, you could go back to... It's like, maybe the problem is because you're trying to grow mono crops. It's like, oh, mm. so obviously there's more of a chance for developing a blight or whatever if you're only growing corn. You know, you'd be better off going back to a more hunter-gatherer sort of thing or whatever. There's all these other things, but then you still have... It is really hard to come up with a good scenario in which you need to leave Earth. Yeah. And, you know, if that's the the story you want to have... Yeah. It just sounds like, to me, these people have gone in, like, really sceptical and Mm. it's like, 
I can't imagine this at all. And it's like, really? Because just listen to the movie because they're kind of giving you the scenario. You don't really need to imagine it. You just need to watch and you'll see that scenario unfold. It's like, if it wasn't for the wormhole, then yes, absolutely. There is There are very few situations oh, no. in which it would be like, oh, we're better off to leave. It's like, well, no, it's going to take hundreds of years for everyone concerned to yeah. get anywhere and there will probably be nothing there. Yes. Whereas it's like, well, no, we've, we've shortcutted that. We've folded space and here's a shortcut to a place with multiple viable planets. Yes. Which is, I, I just loved that they did that. I was just nerding out the whole time when they're like, yeah, so... Uh, closest solar systems like a thousand years away how yeah. are we gonna have interstellar travel and i was like yeah i know right because that's what our planet's like it's really far away from we're all the other the, solar systems we're in a backwater the unfashionable arm of the left hand spiral galaxy of the universe yeah like the galaxy is uh, it's like other other dudes in solar systems like their solar system will be next to another solar system that's you know like as close as pluto yeah they're they're like, just like, oh, yeah it's just like you know around the corner neighbors i can see like two suns in the sky at all times yeah one of them's a bit smaller than the other, what of it? Man. One's orange and one's yellow. But it's just like, yeah, we just... No, nah, we're just, just like, we're, we're solo. We're solo out here. Um, so yeah, I was just like really nerding out that I loved that they like covered that in the science fiction movie. And then also, um, uh, I loved um, when they were like, oh yeah, so this is how relativity works. So when mm. you're a black hole, so time on that planet is going to pass slower slower and they kind of even explain they're like well because gravity's so strong time just can't flow at a higher speed you're like that is the best explanation of relativity yeah of well, of that's part of it anyway yeah um and then the, like when they touch down on that planet being just entirely like crazy tsunamis and stuff like that that's really yeah. like accurate as well because it's like it has such extreme gravity being near the black hole yeah it's just like it's just water and because just time water. passes slowly it's like yeah sure there's a planet there but it's never had time for anything to, anything to happen to happen on it yeah oops uh, this is probably not the right direction she's got like a dagger and a sword she's awesome yeah we were watching her fight then she's just crazy yeah she's pretty sweet now so mm. to get fucking mm. past that bit Oh, so both too. shot you. Yeah, I thought I'd deflect arrows, guys. It's quite mean. Piece of shit. Get hit by my sword. Whoopsie. Yeah. Oh, that was poor shit. It's like, now this fireball can't hit you there, but I'll just slash you with the sword. Yeah, I don't know. People just have some really funny ideas about it to sell or something. People like, it's really stupid. It's like the power of love saves the day. And it's like, not really. Like, No, it's not at all like Doctor Who. They're like, yeah, they, they make the point that it's like, oh, love is this tangible thing that can travel across time and space. The same as like gravity and stuff. Yeah. Which is like a cool, like, you know, bit of fiction. Theory. It's an interesting idea. But it, 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 it's, but it's not like the power of love solved everything. It's not like love. Love is not a tangible thing, really, in the film. No. It's more like love is a force that can have things happen. Yeah. But that's just because it's one of the few things that can drive people. Mm. It's like love and the desire to live can be an equal driving factor. And because of that, love can make you do things which don't necessarily... Oh, there's bear traps survival. on the ground. Yeah. Oh. This is well. What's this way? What's that way? There's a whole wealth of things that we're just not having. Who's in this cave? Who cares? Hell 
health is still low because it takes too long to recharge. That is a dead man. Ugh. Oh no, those are just bad pants. <laughs> sort of like the skin was torn off of them. Oh, that would have been. That would have been gross. These suckers. Boom. Fireball, bitch. Yeah, I hate you play. I don't want to install anything that uses it. Well, which is a shame because Far Cry 3, stunning game. Just, yep. just the humor is just so perfectly nailed. You know, like it's got all 16, not even 16 bit really, like eight, oh, eight, to, ten, eight to 16 bit, depending on the part of it, animated yep. cutscenes. Yeah, because those cutscenes are kind of, I don't know, I guess they're kind of 16 bit. They could be 8 bit as well. Some bits, of, some bits of it are more 8 bitty. Um, like I suppose you'd just say oh, it's 16 bit. Yeah. But yeah, they're amazing, and that's got all the action movie, 80s action movie stuff. Oh, like the, like the opening level with yeah. the chain gun and the so perfectly referenced. Yeah. And and Michael Bean. Does Michael the Bean. Voice. That's that was by the, earlier when I'm like I'm trying to remember something. That was what it was. I'm like Michael Bean. What was it? I'm trying to remember him from. It's fuck right. Yeah, oh, if you did the voice for game. that. It was just awesome. He's like, yeah. And he just does it, like, badly in just the right way. Because mm. he is absolutely, like, the person from the 80s. Yeah. That should do that. Uh, like, you could pick, like, Arnie and be really, like, just, like, stereotypical. It would be too much. That's the thing. Yeah. It's, it's just so it's just so nailed, the whole mm. thing. You're just like, no, 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 this... this this is just right. I always say that, like, if James Cameron had made Avatar, like, ten years earlier, when he first came up with it, he wouldn't have cast Sam Worthington. He would have cast um, Michael Bean. And that would have been better. It would have been better, but also the rest of the movie wouldn't have been. Yeah, because it would have been people, like, with blue makeup on, you reckon? Yeah, or, like, bad CG. No, but, like, James Cameron would have worked out a way to do it. Yeah, like you could do it with makeup. Like you look at um, the makeup for Abe Simeon in Hellboy. Yeah. Like he's a blue skinned guy, but it's not makeup, it's like a costume. Or well, even Hellboy, who's, you know, because he's that bit big, that bit yeah. bigger. Oh, yeah, absolutely Hellboy as well. I was just thinking, like, in terms of blue Abe skin. Simeon is like a good comparison because when you look at people do a costume for a, a Navi, like, just blue makeup looks shit. No, it's because they've got be. a lot of like there's a lot of skin texture there. Yeah, and a pattern. And Abe Simeon has that sort of pattern skin as well. Yeah, because he's wearing like a latex. Yeah, prosthesis. It's a, yeah, it's, a, it's all like yeah, prosthesis and costume. It's not um, it's not makeup. Yeah, he could have done it. I think it would have been amazing. Doug Jones, just best costume. He just plays all the Navi. Yeah, all of them. Well, that was like the um, I haven't seen Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. But I haven't watched either of those of the new. Oh, Apes really? Films. No. Well, they're good. The f I know the first one is um, significantly better than. I don't know if I want to save just there because then she's got really low health, and I don't know if hers ever regenerates. Um, significantly better than the Tim Burton reboot, that was just awful. Which just never went anywhere. Just made the one shit house because it was shit house. I think it was when playing this earlier this year. I mentioned how I wanted to try and watch the original films yes. prior to watching the new ones. Oh yeah, I just kind of gave up on that because they they do just deteriorate. A certain they way. do, they do kind of deteriorate. And like some people say that the third one is like the best besides the first, which is like probably true. But I really just I... didn't like the modern world setting. Because like, that's when they come back. Yeah, that's when they go the back baby. in time. Yeah. Which is also just, like, questionable compared to the rest of the time travel stuff. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, that happened. Yeah, but why? Because in, like, that's what Planet of the Apes was. Like, it was, like, the only other movie that's really done relativity. Yeah. Is like, oh, yeah, like, <laughs> we are back on Earth. It was just that, like, yeah, we took so long to space travel and stuff that were, like, thousands of years late. And yeah, I, I can't remember what the explanation is for how they get back. Because I, I haven't watched Beyond it. It was some weird thing. I was like, oh yeah, well when, when 
planet was being blown up at the end of the second one. And then that was really weird that it was like, oh yeah, just under the earth, there's like humans that still can talk. Yep, they've been there the whole time. The whole time. They're actually smarter. They're really smart. And they have this weird, stupid religion that they worship an atomic bomb. And like Charlton Heston was in it, but just but seemed, not. It seemed like they just. It felt like they just couldn't get him or something because he was in it so little. Because he's in it f- like briefly at the start and then at the end, and he like insisted that he die. And another dude showed up to be like, "I'm a rescue party," and I went through the same yeah. shit that happened to get here, which is just like serious. Yeah, that was that. That also, you kind of just go with that in that same thing we were saying, yeah. where it's like, oh, oh without that, it wouldn't be a film, but it's not very good. Oh, this guy got murdered. This was the smuggler I spoke of. This was the smuggler you spoke of. Someone's coming. Oh, You're shit. Off, you <laughs> Killer. Oh, oh, geez, you piece of shit. Brigida. Brigida? I don't know how you say that. Oh yeah! Took down three of them. Was that? What was that what? Quest failed. Crown witness. Did she oh, she died. She got killed. Maybe I'll die, and she'll come back to life with not much health. With not much health. Fuck it. No. Well, hopefully I'll come back to life with that insta kill. That, that was great. nice. That looked. Am- I, I'm like, did you do that, or did that was that like scripted for when she dies? You, <laughs> you know, suddenly do that. That was all me. Oh, she's got full health. She's got full health. It's fucking fantastic. This is the smuggler I spoke of. That was, doesn't make sense, but it's awesome. Who gives a shit, man? <laughs> Just give me this. The rest of the like difficulty of the game is bullshit. Just give me this little thing. Oh, now I'm gonna get two of them. Oh, no. Oh. oh. I don't think I've ever seen that one before. That was stunning. She's actually kind of helpful. Oh, yeah, totally. She was just on way too low health before they even survived. Yeah. Yeah, fuck yeah. Fuck off, piece of shit. There we go. Ha! <laughs> Tried to teleport away, but I got him. I'd not have survived on my own. No, we know you wouldn't. You dragged me far away from the city. You owe me an explanation. Who were those men? Who have you been hiding from? I... I don't know. Three days like a rat, you said. Oh, she's lying. I knew. I mean, I had my suspicions. So talk. Tell me about the Vipers. They... they created this storm. Are they working together? I would say they detest one another. Oh, that's what they wish everyone to believe. The devil only knows. Yep. You know what the Count intends? No. But I cannot imagine anyone more different than that. That's why... yeah, so... Really the only good Planet of the Apes movie is the first one. Which is still a great movie. The first one is a great is a great movie, without a doubt. It's so that's why sci-fi. it's cool to reboot it. Like it's totally fine to do that because they're doing like a different sort of job on it, and that's fine. The Tim Burton one was just bad, and that's why they shouldn't have done that one. Yeah, because he just murders franchises with adaptions and reboots, which is odd. Because it's like he's really good. He just shouldn't be allowed to do. Reboots or anything like that. If he hasn't done much good in like a long time. Isn't she a little young for him? When was uh, Halloween? Halloween? No, it's not called Halloween. I forgot what the film's called. I'm an idiot. Oh, you're going to say Nightmare Before Christmas? Yeah. Don't know why I called it Halloween. Well, he didn't direct that movie. He only wrote it. What? Yeah, most people... Don't know that. I feel like you've maybe told me that before and I've just forgotten. The bloke, I'm pretty sure it's the bloke who directed Coraline directed. Oh, wow. That one? Yeah, I think that's who it was. 
Searching wow. For excitement shouldn't get you killed. Okay, cool. It's the last time I do anything of this sort. Um, and also, yeah, Nightmare Before Christmas was like in the 90s. <laughs> did he do, what's that one with that dog that dies and comes back to life? Frank and Weenie. Yeah. Yeah, he did that one like last year or something. That wasn't bad. That was good. That was like a decent timber. Did he actually direct that? Yes. Okay, because I know he didn't write it. No, I think he did. He did the story at least because it was based yeah. off of a short film that he made. But it was like scripted by John movie. August, I'm pretty sure, because oh, okay. he's like a screenwriter who has a really yeah. good blog. Cool. And podcast and stuff. And so it's always like, oh, nice. Should listen to more filmmaking podcasts. Listen really to, like, should. Listen to like a couple of just like random, like funny podcasts and about like seven video game podcasts. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I don't. I don't listen to that many film podcasts. This script notes is what this guy's podcast is called, and it's him and another guy, and they talk and have like other script writers on. So it's that's, all about script that and like great. plot stuff. And oh. so, some of them are, are are a little bit like, well, I'm not a working strain writer, so I'm not particularly interested in like tax issues and stuff like that, which <laughs> they get right into. <laughs> but um, you know. You just either don't listen. Like, there's plenty of podcasts that I listen to, but I haven't listened to every episode of. Yeah, you can just listen to like a random episode and stuff. Sometimes you just miss episodes. And you're like, I'm not gonna go back. And no, back. no. Yeah, that's cool because that was like um, the writers' room. Have you seen that show? Like a uh, show, and it's for the guy who's the dean from Community. Yeah, I think I've watched like one episode because he's an awesome writer. And he has writers on from other shows. Yeah. And they discuss things, writing processes and different stuff. That sounds really good, actually. It is good. It's really cool. They have, like, the people on from Breaking Bad, from Game of Thrones. Um, I love the idea of all these people just being, like, friends and just, like, hanging out. I only watched a couple because some of the shows I, like, don't watch. So I was like, I'm not going to bother watching that. Yeah. Like, there might have been, like, Supernatural or something, or Arrow or something. One of those shows that I'm like, I don't want to watch that because yeah. I don't like the show. I haven't given any of those DC TV shows... The time of day. Yeah, or Marvel TV shows, for that matter. I'd say don't bother. Some people are like, oh, yeah, Arrow got really good. But I'm still like, I watched the beginning of it, and it's just soap opera it's yeah. like a soap opera superhero show. Like uh, that really horrible Superman thing they did for all those years, Smallville. Yeah. Yeah, like Smallville. Like the people that like argue that Smallville is good are the ones that are telling me that Arrow is good. And yeah. I'm like, well, I didn't like Smallville at all. Like 10 fucking seasons of Clark Kent not being Superman sounds great. <laughs> Gotham, I feel like it might be worth giving you. Yeah, that one feels like it is the one that deserves a look at. I sort of, sort of figured I'd wait until they were done with, like, a season. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I, I'm the same because, like, Netflix bought it, so... Oh, did they? Yeah, so I'll just watch it when it comes out on Netflix. They bought it as in, like, if they do another season, it'll be a Netflix original? Or? No, it's just in, like, distribu- distribution okay. rights. So they said, hey, we've officially announced that Netflix is coming to Australia and New Zealand in March. Which totally means they're going to crack down on people watching they American might. Netflix. Yeah, Netflix might actually like bother then because they're like, well, no, we're going to make, get you to pay more for less shows. Yeah. Which would suck. But then again, like they can probably just piss off. Because what do you reckon it's going to be? It's going to be like 20, bu- 20 bucks a month? 20 bucks a month, which I think is that's probably what they're going to look at because the new Foxtel, like the really cheap Foxtel deal is like $20 a month. Foxtel Go or whatever it's called. I'm not sure if it's only Foxtel Go, but it's just like, yeah, like a base package of Foxtel for like $20 a month instead of like $20 a week. Yeah. Foxtel, hardest thing to justify, yet so many people have it. I I Mm. can never understand that. Wait, I wouldn't be able to justify that. No. HBO Go, like, oh, not Go, but like standalone HBO app. Yeah. Totally justify that because I'll just be like, oh yeah, I'll just I have it for a couple of months while Game of Thrones yeah. airs. Get out before I call oh, my this guy looks cool. Who the hell is this guy? Convey. Which that one? Both of that them. Guy. That guy. Baron, sir, that guy just a real random, word. muscly, beefy mercenary guy. Out. But he's got like an eye patch, like a awesome like beard, a double beard. He's like an old pirate Viking. Pirate Viking, which are basically just the same thing. 
does that witch I like the idea of Vikings who actually because they never really engage in ship to ship combat. No. No, but being a pirate doesn't mean ship to ship combat. Being a pirate means that you like, you know, steal and plunder. <laughs> yeah, true. I don't know why. And Pirates of the Caribbean has made me made, made me picture pirates as being like, all right, let's fight between ships. Yeah. Which is just impractical at the best of times. Absolutely, and you're like, that's my fucking ship. I don't want that broken because it'll cost a million oh, it'll be dollars. So to expensive repair. and so hard, and oh, then we can't be at sea, and I love the sea. Yeah, I'll tell you what was a good movie, Pirates: Band of Misfits. Yeah, remember we went and saw that in the beanbag theater. I do remember going to see that in the beanbag theater. Sorry, the I completely forgot. I don't know. How did I feel about it at the time? Do you Why? remember? I'm not sure. I'm, 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 like I'm, you I liked it. I don't remember. It's it awesome. I don't remember it super well. Like, my memories of it, I'm like, I feel like some of the humour was a bit misplaced. No, I just remember it being pretty funny. No such yeah. David Tennant was, um, what's his name? I feel I should probably rewatch it then, because, like... I think I should definitely rewatch I'm just not, it. I'm not remembering it. It's being very good. Bears your seal I remember the animation being fantastic. Oh, especially with all the they've got, water. They've got so crazy good with that now. Well, I'm not sure whether it was, like, CG enhanced. Probably. It might have been. Whenever you see that. No, not really. It just needs to not look like shit when it's like 2D animation. They're like, well, we don't know what the perspectives look like when a door swings open, so we're just going to CG it. Yeah. And then it just really stands out as being CG. But when you're like, so this is stop motion animation and we're making it rain. So how do we do rain in stop motion animation? Yeah. It's just. You can do it, but. Why go to all that extra effort and no doubt massive expense? Oh, yeah. There's a film shot on DSLRs. Just just to just throw it out there in a, fun, in a funny what? way. Pirates? Yeah. Ah. Shot on seven Ds. Cool. But, but obviously not in video mode. Yes. Because it's all stills. It's just. That was a funny thing to say at the time because it came out right when everyone's like, oh, DSLR video. Oh, my goodness. This is so amazing. And you're like, yeah, yeah. well, this feature film was shot on DSLR. Like, oh, really? Was it? You're like, yep. Stop motion. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I've read some article that was like, oh, so um, here's this Australian DOP that just shot a film on DSLR and like he's got like a whole bunch of like lists and tips for shooting on DSLR. Yeah. And then I looked at it and like the movie was called like Love Is Now. Oh. And I was like... <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't know if this movie's any good. <laughs> so does that necessarily like? Uh, it's like I'm sure the DOP like you know sort of does no stuff, but it's like this looks like a crappy Australian romantic comedy. I'll wait and see what the actual end product of the movie is before being like, oh, this guy knows how to shoot on DSLR. That's the thing. I mean, yeah, DSLR is one of those interesting things where it's becoming. It's like, well, if you can shoot on DSLR. You can shoot on most things, but it's also affected the way that people see Whoa. like color and things like that because they're like, oh, you have to shoot it flat, mm. and and, that, and then oh, when when you get to doing the gradient, everyone's like, oh no, I liked it, I liked it flat. Yeah, I hate so that. then you're watching this like romantic comedy, and everyone's skin's like this kind of like orangey gray, <laughs> and there's like no real black level or anything. You're like, I hate you, I just hate you all. <laughs> I I refuse to watch this film anymore. Yeah. That's a funny name. It is. Signature and official seal. It does appear the Baron arranged everything. I'm grateful to you, Witcher. You're welcome, fool. So you see, Count, I find myself in an unenviable position. One in which I require the support of your forces in arresting Baron Kimbolt. Baron Kimbolt, a child slayer. Gods protect us. Can I rely on you? Child slayer? The what, did they kill one of the kids? When did that come up? Fills me with trepidation. Well, we saw that they've got the, the daughter. Yeah. Cannot go I guess the Consider son got killed. And my forces That's rough. At your disposal. That is very John rough. Natalis. He went quietly. Yeah, he just got turned around and walked out of there. By the way, he got fucked up. Now then, ooh, look at this stuff. What's this? What? 
don't understand. That sounds like it could be useful. this one. Ooh. Incineration critical chance plus 30%. That just sounds too good to pass up. Nice. Lilies and vipers. Yeah, so like, we're in the same city as you are in the other version of the third Undeniably. act but this is like totally different yeah yeah like the location's different the quests are all different it's where, good where are the quests at now yeah it is good um go save Triss that sounds good you gonna tell me where to go hey shit oh. two places well cause one's Triss and one's Voltest's children Maybe. No, we've been in there. That's we should save Triss. End, isn't it? Should definitely save Triss. Things were way better when she was around. Yeah. She could like teleport us places. Pow. Nice. Witcher. That's a door. It's glowing. Well, there's that fool. <laughs> Everyone's just drawing their swords on you. No, they're just sharpening them. Shink, shink, shink. Ah, uh, this place is familiar. Yeah, this is the place that I remember. It's where the action takes place in the other version. Yeah. Ugh, warriors. You could bathe sometime. <laughs> What's this? What's no, it? I remember you from Fanny. I don't want anything to do with you. Ah. I'm Geralt, Brass of Bannard. I remember you from Thanet. I believe I saw you in Oxenford too. Seems we only ever meet on Elven land. <laughs> Look at that guy's feather in his cap. <laughs> Look at him. You're not here to chat about Elven ruins. Uh. Oh, you do you get weapons on him? Yeah, he sells things. I don't know what he has to do with trees. Perhaps nothing. Even ruined Loch Muin is impressive. It must have been beautiful in the times of the first conclave. Everything was better before the war, as they say. The sources. Those children that old Geoffrey Monk brought here to train in the magic arts must have walked around gaping. Uh, yeah, going back to Christopher Nolan just quickly, because we sort of like just went on the tangent. Yeah, like the way that you said that these movies are really simple, I like a lot of people are like, oh, Interstellar, like it's supposed to be so smart, but I think it's kind of dumb. And it's like, well, it's not dumb. It's just no. like, it does have some like really difficult ideas of like wormholes and relativity and stuff. So like they don't, it's not like, oh, this movie's so smart. They're trying to like sort of like get the, the like the idea across to like the dumbest person possible. I feel so it's like as a very simply explained and told mm. version of it. I feel as though, like, Nolan kind of goes, right, people are in general stupid, but they like feeling smart. So I'm going to, like, co overly complicate, not overly, but I'm going to complicate certain things yeah. and make everything else simple so that, in total, they can still understand what's going on. And when they get what is going on, they'll be like, oh, well, that was complicated, so I'm smart for getting it. Because mm. he's like mass market smart people movies. Pretty much. Yeah, it's that's like, pretty much what he does. It's like most people can't sit down and watch Primer or the um, oh, it's got colour in the name, I can't remember, but the sequel to, not sequel, but like the other film that that guy did. They're both really, really complicated and genuinely most people just can't enjoy watching them. But they're awesome if you get them and Nolan's like, well, people feel like that for certain things. Mm. So I just want everyone to feel like that. Well, that's like, I feel like with Primer, it's just like you shouldn't say a single thing about that movie. Yeah. Don't tell any. Don't tell anyone what that movie's about at all. Don't look it up. Just be like, Primer. This is a really good movie. Yeah. Just watch it. Watch it. Because I just watched it randomly because you gave it to me on my hard drive. Yeah. And I was just like watching it, being like, What are they doing? <laughs> and then you like figure it out. You're like, Wow, this is cool. Yeah. And it's just, 
It's not like a twist or anything. It's just like... No, this is what's going on. This is what the movie is. And you sort of what the, just like try and figure it out. And if you know what's going on before that, then it's not as fun. No, it's a, it's a fantastic film for that. And it's actually a fantastic film in a lot of ways because once you find out that, oh, it took him years to edit it because he like only had so much footage, you're like, well, in, in some ways you can see that when you know it. Yeah. And it, it's... But it's also, it's got that nice sort of thing that Memento does where it's like, it doesn't feel like overly, like, filmy or like this. No. It's just like, oh, it's not just like crazy, uh, what, what am I trying to say? Just that like really big, like Hollywoodized sort of like look to yeah, movies. Yeah, it hasn't it's just got, got like a really modest look. Like it, you can tell it's... It's nicely shot, but budget. it's like not cinemat- It's not cinematographic. Yeah. And it's like not yeah. overly dramatic, which is good. Like I can like a movie that's overly dramatic, mm. but it's cool that it's like much more, like, just more like reality. Yeah, it's grounded. You can imagine if it's like, well, if if th- there were three people and this is what they did, this is what would happen. Yeah, it's not like over orchestrated. No, it's really it's really good. But and then you have, have Nolan who's working with 150 million dollar budgets or whatever it is you can't make something which people aren't going to get yeah cuz if yeah, you alienate right. half your possible who's audience you're not going to make your budget look who's here look who's here to uh, you man yeah you got some explaining to do what do you seek here <laughs> what do you reckon Tris Marigold just go straight Get to the point Guardian camp this tech has addled your brain. Oh shit! Jeez. Nice. Cheek, Geralt. Let's go. Fuck yeah! Well, that just went straight into it. Are oh, you just gonna hold him? son again. My men won't let you leave here alive. They will if you ask them to, Excellency. Yeah, that's right. Uh oh. I feel like I'm gonna have to fight some people. Out of the way, all of you, or the old man dies. Hold there! I'm not joking. I know. And I advise you not to hesitate. Kill him. For we shan't move one bit. Renoir! He who brings me the Witcher's head. We'll get the order of merit. Wow, this is good. He's just like fuck that guy. That's the Fitz Estelin. Your Excellency. Orders from the capital. Just gonna kill him? Yeah. Ah, he's like I was gonna kill him anyway. Now I'll have to kill you all. Oh shit! That felt a little forced, though suitably epic. Get him. It's true. Yeah, I will have to kill you all. Let's hope that, like, you know, 30% chance of incineration happens. Holy shit! It happened! That was fucking awesome! <laughs> it's cool that, like, they catch on fire and then they're just fucked up for it. They're just fire on fire, just burning. That guy's still on fire. I well, think They just attacked their friend. Yeah, it did. And they might have. Yeah, these are these assholes with these big ass shields. Yeah. Oh! Oh! There we go. Get behind him. Light him on fire. There we go. You're done for, sucker. So that was absolutely like the best thing I've ever upgraded. That was very cool. Look at how significantly easier that was than last time. Yeah. And it looked awesome at the same time. So, you know. Yeah. Win, win, win. Winds everywhere. 
Get myself a better steel sword, though. It's pretty shitty. I thought I had a key. Didn't I pick up a little something, something? A little something, something? Oh, that's just twine. Uh, you have, you've never seemed to have keys. No, they were just always freaking locked. Ooh. I'm carrying too much, obviously, because I just picked up a lot of stuff. Oh, that's a garbage steel sword. <laughs> Absolute trash. Um, also garbage. Um, yeah, that's no better. Yeah, fuck it. I'm just gonna go up here and kill these guys. Just left a little so. pile of stuff on the ground. Surely these guys, like, you know, notice what I was doing. Nah, they were, they were just shooting the shit. Talking about Nilfgaardian soldier's girlfriend. And how he's also Nilfgaardian soldier's yes. girlfriend. Yeah, there was there was a lot of competition going on there because he's like, oh, my girlfriend, you know, Nilfgaardian soldier's girlfriend. He's like, what, my girlfriend's Nilfgaardian soldier's girlfriend? They were very unhappy. Mm. I like, it just goes like into the whole like communist-y nature <laughs> of the Nilfgaardians where it's like, yeah, they don't have like names. Yeah. They've got no identities. Oh, look at his body fell down that. Shared possessions and women. Mm. Who also are just Nilfgaardian soldiers. Soldiers, women. Like they just all look the yep. same. They all share the same character model. <laughs> Voice, voiceovers. The beards. Just stop blocking, man. There we go. <laughs> if we make it easier for yourself, just die. Yeah, he was like his health went down to nothing and then disappeared. Where the heck am I going? Yeah, let's jump down here. Um, okay. Hey guys, what are you guys doing over there? Oh, there's, there's that dude. Yeah, you want to get to him. I bet he's got the key. Can I jump back up? No. Nah. Oh, that's how I'm gonna get to it. Feel Did like... you really think you could just prance in here? Make the Emperor Do you feel like you're not supposed to be down here? Him. No, no, no. Oh, I no. totally am. Oh, hey guys. How's it going? Did you have that spare? Yeah. See, it's that little, um, yellow bar with the lightning on it. Ah, oh, okay. And, uh, when I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 30% chance, like, 30%, you yeah, go, that's not that high. It happens a lot. Well, like, plus 30% chance. Isn't that just like, oh, it's a 1 in 3 chance now? Yeah, pretty much. Which is pretty good, considering I'm just, like, spam it every 5 seconds. Yeah, so... Doesn't matter if there's two that don't work. But like, imagine how many times I would have died during all of these fights, taking on all these guys. Yeah, and you haven't. I wasn't just standing back and spamming him. Yeah, no, no, it was good. It I kind of was swinging as well. It was a good mix. It was like, well, really, it was still the sword which actually did the killing, but by setting him on fire, it like it makes them keep their distance. Yeah. They were my best men. Free Triss or join them. You amaze me. How can you risk your life for a witch? Because I'm a witcher. <laughs> She's my favorite there are things yeah. you and your kind will never comprehend. And what are those? Friendship. You don't understand. You guys don't have friendships. You're not individuals. <laughs> what are you talking about? Your friend and the other witches conspired against your rulers. You lie. You think it impossible? Triss was loyal to the crown. 
you're a fool. That's what happens when tits take over a man's mind. I don't believe you. That's irrelevant at this point. During our chat, my people managed to regroup. It's like a Bond conversation. He feels like a Bond villain. Yeah. <laughs> Just his voice. <laughs> or, or like Star Wars, maybe? Oh, great. Now he's run off again. Oh, that was oh, man. not fair. Oh, blimey. I hope that was a quick save. Yeah. Surely.